Hey everybody, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I took an old overgrown field that looks like this behind me. I was able to break the ground and turn it into something like this right here, a beautiful soil bed. I did it all without using a tractor or chemicals or herbicide or anything like that. Stick around and I'll show you how we did it. So this spring, I have been searching for a way to break ground out of an old overgrown field. You can see some of the tall grass standing behind me. I've been looking for a way to get through that without using a big tractor and a big plow or a skid steer with a, a big tiller, for example. Um, those would be the appropriate pieces of equipment for something like this. However, I couldn't afford to hire them this spring and the big tractor with the three bottom plow, I wouldn't have been able to get back here into this secluded location with the access to this land that I have. So I went on a bit of a journey. It was uh, quite a journey, a lot of wear and tear on my four wheeler. And I, I hit the pocketbook a little too hard, I think. I ended up chasing down some dead ends and I'll tell you guys about those here in a second. Maybe save you a little bit of money and time and wear and tear on your equipment. The first path I went down, you guys, was this one right here. This is called a Groundhog Max uh, plow, I guess they call it. Um, I did a bunch of research online, watched YouTube videos, and got fired up about the idea of using one of these. Um, a lot of folks had claimed, you know, that it would plow the ground and, and break ground, and that's what I was looking for. And I ended up burning a whole bunch of my precious Cabela's Club points on this thing. I ordered one. Now, um, it, it did it did work as it said it would um, you know out of the box per se but it didn't work in the sense that it, it didn't get me that ground actually tilled up um, the big problem that I got out here you guys is the fact that this is an old overgrown field and given the amount of grass and, and root systems out here there's just an incredible root layer and sod layer out here it's so sod bound that this groundhog max just couldn't quite do it. I spent, I think, four or five nights out here with this thing. Um, tons of time on the wheeler, wear and tear, and it just didn't seem like this was enough to really churn that soil up and prepare it in such a way that it's uh, what I would consider a food plot that I want to use. So the second piece of equipment that I used was a little walk behind rototiller and that's something that I had owned already so I didn't have to go buy it. Um, it's meant for a little vegetable garden but I used and abused that thing out here as you'll see in the video and the more passes that I made with that tiller I started to realize this is the piece of equipment that's going to get me all the way down through that total root layer that that whole soil profile that's just completely locked with roots and plants and organic material, that tiller did a far better job than this Groundhog Max did. And it was not easy. I put a lot of abuse on that piece of equipment, but ultimately that's what it took to get through this grass layer behind me that you see. You guys I am on the second pass with my tiller it's really tough out here trying to till this with just a just a walk behind garden tiller um, it's not the right piece of equipment but again I don't have a tractor and I don't have anything bigger than this so I'm just using what I got out here I just wanted to take a second and show um, kind of what we're up against um, these are some of the these are some of the root clods that I'm trying to uh, deal with out here it's amazing these native grasses are just they have incredible root structures the root balls are I mean just they're they're so tough these tiller blades can't even go through some of these um, there's some really bad chunks of sod out here you can see what I'm trying to do this is a good example right here of as I kind of chew into this hillside you can see you can see how thick this this sod mat is. Give you kind of a close up here. You can see just the years and years of decaying matter out here, uh, which is a good thing. You can see this layer right here. It's just it's squishy. squishy. It's almost bizarre. Um, 
it's just like a big sponge. You can imagine on, when we get a big rain out here how these soils and this sod thatch just soaks up that rain. But it's really hard to bust through this with the tiller tines. I'm getting through a lot of it, but uh, some of these claws, like I say, it just can't get through. All right, you guys, so I had to shut the tiller down. I just blew a belt. Um, it actually looks like it could be kind of tricky getting it back on, so I am gonna YouTube a couple of videos on how to get this belt back on because the, the bottom pulley looks like it's tough to get at, but I shredded it. Um, I'm kind of dead in the water here for the time being, but I just thought I'd stop and show you um, what the ground looks like behind me here. You can see how dark all the soil is um, and then how uh, grassy it is yet here. So what I found is that as I've been using this walk behind tiller, um, I've done multiple passes on top of this part of the food plot right now and I realized that I'm still not breaking through the sod layer. So it's kind of deflating and I, I was kind of dejected when I realized this. When you till in real wet conditions like I've been doing, the soil comes up real rich and dark looking and kind of spills on top of the grass and it makes it look like you're you're tilling the ground but you're actually not. So I think this is my fourth pass now with this tiller on this plot and I realized I had to slow it way down and just let this tiller grind down through the entire sod mat, through that entire root layer. And I haven't been doing that up to this point. And you know, I got blisters on my hands and my head is kind of rattling right now from running this thing so much. But uh, that's kind of the trick with this I'm realizing. You gotta slow it down. You gotta let those tines just auger their way down and just chew their way down through this root mass because it is incredibly root bound out here. I had no idea it was gonna be this tough. When I started this project, I wanted to do my own food plot, break ground on my own food plot with no herbicides, no chemicals, and no farm equipment. And so I'm trying to do this with just consumer level tools and, and no spray, and it is very tough. So the good thing is my time is free. I can come out here and invest as much time as I want out here in the evenings to do this after work. Um, some people might argue your time's not free, but um, for the purposes of my food plot, um, there's no real loss there for me as far as the time I got invested into this. All right, you guys, it's June 13th out here, checking in with you on the food plot that I'm making, uh, basically by hand, no tractor, no herbicide, and you can see it behind me, all around me. Um, I, I confirmed my fears here, and that's all this grass coming back in. Uh, the last time I checked in with you guys, I blew the belt on the tiller and I was able to get a new one ordered and I finally just got the new belt put on. So I haven't touched this in about a month. And so this is what it looks like after a month's worth of growing and trying to grass back in. Um, you know, and when I tilled it last time, there were these great big clods of roots and just an incredible mass of um, old plant life out here and plant matter and it looks like a lot of these plants have re-sprouted from those root clumps and that was my big fear. This first year I think if I stay on this plot throughout the summer I'm gonna till it now again it's June 13th and then I'm gonna uh, leave it and then till it one more time right before I plant in mid-July but um, looking at this ground out here you know there is still dirt um, you know, there is still bare dirt out here and I'm down to it in a lot of areas. There's just a lot of plants and grasses trying to grow back in and try to reestablish themselves out here. And it's amazing, those chopped up roots that I left out here a month ago, a lot of those just sent new grass blades up and it is just remarkable how much grass is trying to fill back in out here. I'm gonna hit it again with the tiller here. We're back in action with our new belt. I'll keep you guys posted. Well, I've made my first few passes around the food plot, you guys, since I put the new belt on the rototiller. And uh, behind me here, you can see how awesome this turned out. Um, 
I am officially breaking this ground. I wanted to talk about a couple of the big things that I think made me successful in being able to break this ground uh, without using a tractor or any herbicide or chemical. And number one, that is uh, the fact that I came out here in the spring when all of this grass, see this big bank of green grass out here in the old field? I came out here when that was all dead from the winter time. Um, I, till, I started with that and the reason for that is I didn't want the grass to get too tall or too stemmy like it is right now and try to till through that. It would not work. It would just ball this tiller up and it wouldn't allow me to move forward. So I took advantage of the natural cycle. So you know I don't want to use chemicals out here or herbicide and that's just a, a personal choice I want to make. I don't know that it, um, you know it's it's the worst thing in the world that you can do. Um, there's a lot of folks with a lot of opinions but just for my own purposes I just didn't want to use it out here um, on my food plots and so I tried to find a way to do this organically no spray and by by tilling it right after all of the snow melted and when the ground first started to thaw in the, in the spring, um, it essentially gave me an opportunity to till this ground similar to what it would be if I had used spray. So it's like using a chemical and doing a burn down without actually using the chemical. So that was one big thing that I took advantage of this spring and that really knocked things back to where it got it like this for me. Um, you know, you can see these old rotting clumps of grass and roots in here. And that leads me to my second point of why I think this was so successful is because I just gave it a little bit of time. I didn't try to bite it all off at once. I didn't try to come out here with this tiller and just think I was going to have a beautiful food plot in one pass. I did it in a, a series of repetitive tillings. and. One of the big things that I learned is when you when you go out here initially in the spring to do this, um, you're going to end up with a lot of biomass on the surface, roots, grass, all sorts of weeds, and it would really bog down the tiller and it would get bound up in the tines and it made it really, really difficult. So by waiting a month, you know, scratching it up as best as I could and then waiting a month, that allowed a lot of this kind of stuff right here, these root clumps to just start to decompose and melt into the soil. Now when I come through a month later here in June, you can see what it looks like behind the tiller. It's just beautiful. It's just a real rich, loose, easy to till soil. And I can see that all of this grass matter is mixing in with the dirt and it's just getting completely decomposed. Even in one month's time, it's just remarkable the difference it makes in getting that residue that's on top of the ground to just sort of melt away into the ground. So those were two big keys for me. Um, I went into this project initially just be, uh, because of finances. I just couldn't afford to hire out everything. So I did hire a guy with a skid steer and a tiller to do my big plot over there behind the camera. But I wanted to try to do this smaller plot on my own. I also had the guy make some other trails and I had a certain budget I was working with and this plot here was just not in the budget. So I wanted to make this video and prove to myself and others that I can do it this way and just, just to save the money. So this plot was essentially free for me to build out of a field that looked like this for the past, oh, I would bet 20, 30 plus years, this field has just been overgrown with natural grasses and weeds like this. And I went in and completely broke this ground into something like this right here behind me, behind the tiller that is just rich, dark, it's beautiful, it's ready for seed. And all I really had invested into this, you guys, is my time. And for, for myself, that's free um, when it comes to a hobby and something I'm passionate about, like deer hunting. So I did have this rototiller. This is an 18 inch uh, wide power mate. And like I said, I, I roasted a belt. Um, you know, trying to break ground is not really what these little things are meant for but it is incredible the work that this thing did and the success that I had with it. Again, I think it's because I took it just one piece at a time and I did it over a series. I didn't try to do it all at once. And I just worked with the land and just took what it would give me in terms of tilling it. I did blow the belt, I got a new one on and now it's just, it's going through this like a hot knife through butter. So I hope you guys found the video helpful and informative. If you did, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. 
Uh, subscribe to my channel. I make a lot of deer hunting and whitetail related videos um, relating to food plots and hunting and scouting public land. Um, if you would, check those videos out if you're interested. And until next time, take care.